Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining again. Uh, these sessions, as I told you even last week, is that these are custom made to make us understand uh, how we have to make our decisions in life. Uh, they train you on topics uh, which are generally people learn through experience. So I have learned some through my experience and uh, some I have learned from my seniors from their experience. So we collated all these topics into relevant topics, which will be useful for all of you, be it juniors or seniors. Or... So talking about today's topic, it's more uh, from a manager's point of view, but as a, as a worker, as a subordinate, you can also learn a lot of things while you all become managers in future, right? So I will go ahead and uh, start presenting the <clears throat> deck, okay? So, Today's topic, as I said, is managing with knowledge, conviction, and compassion, right? So I'll read this brief text before I go forward. There are many management schools around the world. Many management scholars are writing many good books explaining the art of management. The seminar explains the core principles of management with live examples of great leaders. This seminar will help you connect with them and explain you, explain how you can adopt to those principles to better manage yourself and others, right? So there are many management books, but there are some things that we'll discuss today in this call, uh, you will not find in many management books, right? In fact, what I have done is, uh, you know, I learn a lot of spiritual subjects from ancient scriptures. So there are some principles in those scriptures which are applicable even today. Actually, they're applicable forever. You know, in any time and days, they're applicable. So I have tried to relate them to our current work environment and see how much they are useful in our work, in our workplace, right? So you will hear some, uh, some uh, discussions that I'll be speaking from the Vedas, certain things that are there in the scriptures. And I'll tell you, this is how it is explained and how it applies today and how for our managers today to be applicable, right? Am I audible? Is that okay? Did you all hear? Yes, sir. Okay. So managing with knowledge, conviction, and compassion. So here, Henry Ford is telling a beautiful thing. Henry Ford is the founder of Ford Motors. He's saying, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress and achieving to a, together is success, right? Uh, it means a lot, meaning uh, leaders are not the people who go and achieve things alone. They make many others inspired by their, uh, by their activities and they make them all achieve their goals also. Those are the leaders. So leader is the one, there are many definitions of leaders, but one of the best definitions that I liked personally is leader is not the one uh, who achieves great successes, uh, while he's there. In fact, leader is the one who creates an environment in which success becomes easy for people even after he leaves, right? Even after the leader leaves, people will still become successful following his footsteps. Such, a, such leaders are real leaders of this world, right? So Henry Ford is saying that doing it alone is not the great deal. Doing it together is a big deal, right? So in today's discussion, we will go through the importance of management and uh, what is expected from managers today at workplace. Many of us already know this, but uh, let's see what else uh, you know the modern managers can achieve through ancient wisdom by three different bases, right? Knowledge, conviction, and compassion. How these three things are very important for every employee, for every individual. We'll discuss on length on these three things. Then concluding remarks for managers, right? Uh, how would we conclude this whole seminar, whatever that we learned today? And uh, checkpoint, how do we know if we have achieved the target? We have to assess also. Actually, this, these kind of seminars also have workshops after that. But since we are doing all this virtually, you know, we can't really do the workshops. Maybe sometime in future, we can also plan workshops for the employees, you know, after doing such seminars. So what you can do is you can actually calculate and assess your situation, where you stand, according to what you heard in the seminar, right? So that's what workshops do. And of course, Q&A, okay? So um, 
any questions on what we are going to do today okay let's begin right. yeah so importance of management last week also we discussed as lifestyle management you we spent about asking what is management right so management includes man age and ment right manage the man within you and uh, uh, age is maturity of how to manage that you gain and management with hands heads and hearts right so we have to we have to mature ourselves to perform management a small child cannot manage things he has to mature himself uh, by working with many people before he becomes a manager right it's a it's a misconception uh, my dear friends that people can go to a management school and become a manager or you can go and do a, what is that a project managers uh, pmi course and you become a manager no management is not something that can be taught through a course it is a consciousness that needs to awaken of how you have to manage right some people are good managers right from the beginning and uh, while they work with their seniors they develop more skills of management and it only keeps getting enhanced right it's a, it's a very different trait of being a manager so henry fayol's definition mostly studied and we all got 10 out of 10 by writing this answer is goal of management is to create an environment where everyone can achieve his goals efficiently and effectively right as simple as that right i cannot make everybody work but i can create an environment in which i am motivating each other to work right and people look at each other get inspired from each other and they'll keep working that is what is the goal of a manager if a manager is uh, trying to micromanage that means he has already failed as a manager of course sometimes a manager has to do that because while he is building up the team but at a certain point he should not micromanage he should just oversee things he should keep just inspiring people rewarding people recognizing people and the things should go on by themselves right so what do managers do what managers do right so manager means to get things done that we all know organization it's like a social unit composed of two or more people right performing certain activities there is a whole textbook definition that is there as you can see on the screen so management functions include mainly four things right once you become a manager you would see your own manager doing four things primarily one is planning second is organizing controlling and leading right planning organizing controlling and leading now these things are there you know i don't need to spend time with you in today's seminar explaining about these things because you can go to internet and find 100 ted talks on these aspects that, that, that there is nothing great about it so project manager he has different roles to play that is when he is uh, uh, he is successful when i say project manager it's a leader's position right it can be a vice president it can be a director it can be but ultimately they are managers right so he has to be a good leader a good communicator a good decision maker a good negotiator influencer and a motivator all these things together when a personality uh, acquires them gets them he naturally wins every war in his life right because he is able to manage people and manage circumstances also every manager pretty much hears his expectations right i mean if you go to a uh, project management workshop or a pma workshop you will hear all these things you know so again as i said i want to go one step above today of what managers really have to do right so mostly they deal with these functions and responsibilities let's go now what empowers managers right what really empowers managers if i have to see functions responsibilities and abilities and skills right um, these are the things which actually empower a person being a manager that's what people you know uh, today know like for example uh, functions including planning organizing leading and controlling right so while he does this he is empowered to do them better and he actually does it for an organization responsibilities include mainly staffing communication people communicating to everybody training and growing the business right we all have heard about these responsibilities now in order to do these he also needs certain abilities and skills a manager needs some abilities and skills right can anybody tell what abilities and skills we are a manager needs to perform these functions and responsibilities let's make it a little interactive hmm? what kind of abilities and skills a manager would need to perform these functions and responsibilities perfectly He should be good, very good communicator. First. Yes, a good communicator, very good. Anything else? 
a good listener and uh, good at time management yeah good at time management and a good listener very good points yes anything else and it should be people manager it should be people manager people minded yes should you should treat people respectfully and uh, you should understand people's problems so in a way i've just kept i think the same points here delhi he should be a good delegator he should be a good mentor he should be having good presentation skills good public speaking skills right two different should things be... presentation and public speaking assertive smart good listener calculative right and uh, approachable and dependable right so these are some uh, these are some very important traits clear uh, with his vision yeah clear with his vision now actually the point that you just told who just spoke who is the one who told about vision raghavendra raghu yeah, raghavendra that's a very important point that you told which which normally people don't speak this, which is what we are going to cover today which is what i am going to speak uh, mostly today is people think these skills are enough in order to be a good manager you all can become managers in future or some of you are already managers right uh, people think that these skills are enough but no there is something more to this right so i'm going to i'm going to show you that there are three pillars of being a manager three foundational pillars which is what we're going to discuss today first one is knowledge second is conviction third is compassion now some might feel what is compassion got to do with uh, managerial skills right i mean uh, how can this be a foundation how, how can conviction i know conviction what is there to specially discuss about conviction knowledge i already know my knowledge you know i have a appointment letter i know what my responsibilities are i know what is my project i know what is my customer right what exactly uh, do we mean by knowledge here so what else is there which a person should know right so now today we are going to spend good time on these three pillars knowledge conviction and compassion mind you this seminar is not for managers alone for every single individual who is attending this call can actually gain a lot if he starts investing in these three areas knowledge conviction and compassion right so let's go forward foundation number 1 knowledge now when you say what is the meaning of knowledge right dictionary meaning it says facts information skills acquired through experience or education the theoretical and practical understanding of a subject is knowledge right so any understanding that you have about anything practically or through you know through some other means is knowledge you have so many we all have so much knowledge about so many things right now but what knowledge do you need as a manager right so uh, let me ask you know you all of you just for some discussion what do you think is a knowledge a manager should have hmm? what comes to your mind what knowledge a manager should have multiple things sir rashman <clears throat> uh, yeah so one thing is if it is a if it is a project manager means he should able to know about uh, how to manage the project first of all how to yes. manage the project planning power methodologies yes. and uh, uh, exactly on uh, how project uh, project chart it means it comes everything as a project how to manage the project first thing yeah. and uh, how to do this as a tool skills no presentation skills and everything he should able to uh, know the key stakeholders who are the key yes. stakeholders of the project Maybe. yes either client side or our side both sides yeah in addition you should able to be able to understand the pulse of it not just yes. understand the case pulse of it on what is their what is their uh, needs of this project yeah. so somebody some some other some uh, cfos may expect something else something uh, their uh, expectation has to be met or stake they wish manage not the expect we should be able to manage the expectations of the key stakeholder yeah manage the expectation of each stakeholder amazing thank you murli for sharing very important points right that were brought on the table knowledge is not just about some technical knowledge that people yes, have yes. it's it's more about how do you understand people yeah. right so we need knowledge from the right source with the right content for the right purpose all the three things are important right source right content and right purpose right so let's ut utilize some ancient knowledge you know for modern times right uh, as we go forward in in spiritual language there are uh, something called three kinds of knowledge one is called sambandha gyan right relationships second is called abhidhaya gyan which is process 
and third is called prayojana gyan is goal right so when, whenever we read any scripture you know like bhagavad gita or bhagavatam or uh, any of the spiritual scriptures irrespective of religion they deal with all these three things right relationships they talk about relationships they talk about process and they talk about goal these three things are very important right even in our corporate life we will now try to relate to it first i am giving a little uh, spiritual understanding of of these things right um, just be pay a little attention because then you will learn uh, a very deep subject matter and also try to apply it in current life right so i just ask you to be a little attentive in the next few minutes so what is sambandha gyan actually sanskrit we all know sambandha right is a telugu word also is a hindi word also almost all in, all languages sambandh means relationships so in spirituality bhagavad gita deals with five subject matters right uh, this this book bhagavad gita deals with five subject matters what is jiva what is ishvara kala prakriti karma this five things it deals with so if somebody has learned bhagavad gita he will understand all these five things very very clearly any you know scripture which talks about god and god's message deals with these five things jiva who am i ishvara who is god kala what is this time time which is ticking and making all of us old and prakriti what is this material world and where are we what is this word metal planet space what is this prakriti it's called prakriti material nature and karma action and reaction right i do something i get a reaction for that in this life next life whatever you know is there so this five aspects together constitute sambandha gyan right and then you have abhideya gyan abhideya gyan means process knowledge in order to achieve a goal you have to follow a process what is the process in spirituality we learn scriptures you know uh, we have to read scriptures some people go for meditation but meditation also is good but ultimately you need to get knowledge also of what you are meditating on how do you achieve your spiritual goals so chanting the names of god it's there in all religions you know even in muslims uh, they chant uh, allahu akbar you know they have the uh, uh, they have the rhymes that they have to sing every morning five times during a day etc even christians they chant you know on rosemary beads the names and even in vedic scriptures there are so many mantras that are given manastrayate iti mantra so they also follow that right and meditation on the form of the lord so name of the lord form of the lord some people meditate on formless some people meditate on form etc etc so basically in order to achieve a goal there is a process there is a process that is given and we all have to go through the process irrespective of religion certain process are given in every path right and then finally the goal itself why are we doing what we are doing right the goal is first number goal in spirituality is to purify our heart to remove all bad thoughts bad wishes you know some grudges we should just remove them and become free and then we should aim to go back to our father's land you know whatever name you call your father as which is krishna allah or jehovah whatever name that you are calling him you should have a plan to go back to him because every religion says come back father is claiming his children back come back to me and of course when you go back to him there is no more birth and death you know we are all taking the cycle of birth and death is going on we are becoming old we will die again we take birth again it's there even scientifically it's proven that reincarnation exists you know like there are so many cases live on this earth uh, in university of virginia there is a uh, scientist named uh, ian stevenson he is not any religionist he has 2000 cases of children who spoke about their past life so basically we don't want to go out, go and take another life you know again come back and again you know learn 10th grade 12th grade then again get into a job join larhan or another company again I mean, why do you want to get into that so spirituality means to get out of that cycle and to go back to our father and these are the goals right and purify our heart in order to do that there is a process to do that and then there is a process to do that for but to apply that process i need to understand what is what whatever is there around me what is what so who am i who is god what is this material universe that i see and what is this time which is ticking who started ticking this time and what is this action and reaction so sambandha gyan right so when people go through this they actually you know this is this is the i'm i'm giving you a glimpse of how spiritual matters are taught and knowledge is of three types sambandha gyan abhideya gyan prayojana gyan sambandha gyan relationship knowledge process knowledge and goal knowledge now these things we can apply in the corporate world also now when you say sambandha gyan we should know five things right 
corporate values founder's objective whoever has started this company what was his thought process in the mind why did he start it unique selling potentials revenue goals product service and offerings now these five elements together are very very important for any company to go forward right now what we should a individual or a manager should do is understand them individually and also the relationship between them right it's very very interesting. so anybody who is in the company who doesn't understand the revenue goals of the company who doesn't understand what is the company special about right why we say that we are a gold partner of sap right uh, lorhan is a gold partner of sap that's a very unique selling proposition and and we should know that my specialization my company specializes in sap right what is the founder's objective is to make this a 50 million dollar company or become a exclusive you know uh, uh, a partner to to sap in some very niche solutions uh, in certain vertical or horizontal or what are the corporate values we carry what what do we tell our employees again and again that this is the value this is the value that we will not compromise we will hold on to these values so what are those values and what are the product service and offerings that we are offering so all these five things and the relationship among them should be understood by a manager exactly like in order to achieve a spiritual goal you should know what is the creation in the same way in order to achieve your career goal and the goal of the company you should achieve this you should understand these five things very very clearly right and then next is abhidaya again process now how do you achieve that goal of a company when you have a right corporate structure when you have a right delivery and support organization when you have right work methodologies when you have excellence center of excellence and tools and when you also reward your employees right now these all things part of the process you have to execute these processes in order to achieve your goals so as a good manager you should get trained to understand and the reasoning behind this process right not just blindly follow that you know here here is a project project plan template you have to use this in our company we use this no that's only a that's only a artifact that is given kind of a standard but then you can amend it according to the time place and circumstance right so you should understand the reasoning behind them why certain work methodology has been kept in place why certain delivery and support organization is there for example uh, for us in our company right now finance function is not only for indian operations of lorhan but we also have another two companies how many of you know that we have another two companies one for australian business one for uh dubai business right and we have branches foreign branches there but the finance for all these companies sitting at one place hr for all these companies sitting at one place right so we have certain centralized support operations delivery team is also centralized at the same time decentralized right again within delivery we have certain you know special delivery functions like support implementations proof of concepts or certain center of excellence so we have we have some and we are building some so you need to understand what process is the company adopting in order to achieve the goal and what is the reasoning behind it right and then finally the goal uh, what is the goal of a company right and and the goal that you should have as a manager for your subordinates is that how we are contributing to the society uh, how is your employee satisfaction and how happy is your customer and how what is your investor profitability these are the goals the five you know four important goals you know the people who are invested in this company are they happy are they investing more looking at the progress and are our customers happy with uh, hiring us for what what we are do what we do and uh, are the employees happy are they i'm not talking about only salaries that's not only thing that the employees remain in a company for right uh, it's more about learning opportunities it's more about challenging uh, opportunities it's more about good relationships on the floor and a very understanding environment cooperative environment so all these things fall into employee satisfaction and contribution to society how we as a company and we as a person are contributing to the society right for example we all have experience and we can share that experience in the form of certain seminars that i'm doing right now i like to do this so you can also do for whatever you can to your juniors or colleagues you can learn something new and share and as a company what we are doing to the society right um so all these things are part of the goal and what you should understand as employees prioritize these goals prioritization of this goals explains the current state of the company right for example uh, ours is a startup right i'll not say startup but it's a bit, little bigger than that we acquired earlier company as you all know from zensor 
and uh, then we are trying to add more customers and trying to go up the chain you know uh, in the, in the in the it market so among these four i think the most important thing right now is customer delight for our kind of situation right now and then it's about investor profitability so that they can invest more and of course employee satisfaction is also very important and then contribution to society when we grow to a certain point we can actually start tangibly giving back to the society in many many ways now also we are doing it but we can do more so the prioritization of this goal you understand what is my company right now focusing on right now company is focusing that's what your leaders in the organization tell you is that company lorhan is right now focusing on customer delight and investor profitability these two things are very much on the key but for this to happen i need to have my employee satisfaction also right so employee satisfaction is also being taken care and ultimately contribution to society so this is the hierarchy in which uh, a, a company which is growing up will will focus on right they'll spend more and more uh, time and uh, time and energy on those so this is called having knowledge right having knowledge means you have sambandha gyan on on the most important aspects of the organization your abhidaya gyan the process that the organization is following to achieve its goals and then you have prayojana gyan the whole goal itself right so did you all understand this slide so far yes lakshman yeah yes lakshman so, yeah just try to you know gulp what you can because i said you know uh, this is going to be a little deep seminar relating certain spiritual subjects to today's world so a lot of people think that spirituality has got nothing to do with today um, i strongly believe and i have seen many leaders who are who are very spiritual and they implement what they learn in scriptures even at their workplace and actually it works out now if you really see sambandha gyan abhidaya gyan prayojana gyan goal process and relationships how many of you feel it's applicable even today do you see it applicable it is applicable in every day day to day life like also yeah so uh, you know so that that's the that's the beauty of uh, the ancient scriptures that they provide this wide framework in which we can fit in every situation of our life right so continuing with the knowledge so manager needs knowledge right so cut the blame game most important thing right uh, if you want to really progress as an individual and an organization we should cut that blame game and let's focus on accepting and changing we all need change we all want to change we all have to change right for change for what to, for becoming a better person better executor we miss out on fundamentals common mistakes sometimes we do now i'm going to be very blunt on this right so many managements i have seen in many companies they do these mistakes and normally they just pass a dialogue you know say ah this is what they kind of justify so here is a mistake that they do and here is the dialogue that they generally say right i'm giving some examples for example induction program is least important right actually you know new joinees and uh, people not not only induction of the company but even induction to the project induction to the a customer induction to the new challenging assignment is very very important we have to spend a lot of time on it but what do people say just brief them who shall send who is available for inducting also you know okay this guy is available now let him to the induction program no a leader has to spend a lot of time inducting his team inducting the new people to the team right inducting the customer is very very important but actually people lose out on that so this is one of the knowledge uh, that we should uh, we should give it to others and we should also get it whenever we get into any new assignment right induction program is very very important but unfortunately it's the least important and that's why the organization suffer next lateral hiring to bring knowledge right go outside and get people with different skills that is also not a right thing but for that not to happen and the in house people should be trained the attitude of the employees also should be right right the attitude of the employee should also be that yes i want to learn and i want to uh, you know be available for next challenging technology etc right but unfortunately later hiring you know is mostly used these days not only here many many places to get people right and the justification is hire new you know we don't have time to train i am i'm not a training company i i should just go and hire people no manager should be in house you know and actually growing leader should come from within not from outside what is the problem if you get a leader from outside can anybody share your thoughts what is the problem organization faces if you just bring a leader from outside what will happen hmm? 
गुड he will try to implement on his in his own ways like whatever he has learned he will not take it what is wrong with it what is wrong with it do you see anything wrong with vision. it see he should take company's vision company's goal in mind and then probably uh, take the necessary steps right but whatever he has learned from outside he will try to implement those things in the uh, current organization which will be again a uh, few people might take and few people might not take uh, those whatever is suggesting right so that yes. would be a wrong if a person is from internal so he knows in and out about the company and he knows what will what if he takes the wrong step what will impact and what will be the those things he knows his pros and cons of the companies very well so i think internal will be a very good option rather than yeah. picking outside yeah that's a, that's a good one thank you durga yes so you would know the company the assets that you already have and what what challenges we faced in the past there is a whole history of the company you would know right so it's always great to have leaders emerging from within and that's why when you see companies you know which have lasted in it for 30 40 years these companies directors are mostly the people who have spent like 20 25 30 years in the same company right uh, i'm not saying getting laterals is bad but the first choice should always be internal you know we should try to grow from within and then you know scale up and then you can get laterals at the junior level not at a very senior level that's that's what many companies many successful companies have done right next learning not shared right uh, this is another thing people think that okay why do i need to share whatever we have with others right uh, biggest treasure for a company is experience this is not retained and distributed right experience If something bad happened fire people something good happened keep people you know something um uh, something did not work out people leave the company or join the company so these all things what it does is learnings are not shared you know and people say it would not apply you know besides who would speak about failures why should i sit down and understand what are all the projects that we failed as a company well failures are the places where we can really learn because uh, places where we have succeeded yeah there is something to learn there also but when we have failed there is a lot to learn there so that we don't fail again right so a uh, lot of the times uh, people only talk about success stories but it's very also important to learn the like if i am sitting with a leader i would say can you share with me couple of failures in your life for, from which you learned lot of lessons i think he'll have lot more to say than to go and ask uh, just say that okay can you tell me all the success stories couple of them and things that you learned failures teach many more lessons right Uh, that is also very important which people miss out universal application without discrimination we have a standard we will universally apply it that also is not right right that knowledge is also you know like th this much knowledge is needed more than this should not be shown and is unnecessary that's what people say no when when somebody is coming into the organization give him maximum knowledge give him full access to knowledge give him uh, make him available you know let him let him get completely knowledgeable and then make the decisions according to the need right so giving half information or giving little information saying people will figure it out like i'll tell you one example uh, long time back i think around uh, 2010 something like that i was in a place called greenville in in us so there we have a g power you know g logistics plant right to make windmills and big logistics so we had a uh gtm project there you know and uh, i was the program manager and uh, one of the biggest challenges i faced is even though we say ge is a very process driven company but there was no induction there was no induction program right um, and it also applies to contractors so there are more contractors in a company like ge as compared to employees they have more contractor based you know, model because they can, they don't want to hire and fire and they just want to buy and remove that that's more easier for them legally also so they have more contractors than employees in in these companies so but unfortunately the induction program is only done to the employees and not to the contractors uh, ultimately when the contractors are the people who are going to do your work it's very important that you conduct induction session even for the contractors but they did not and because of which almost a big cost i don't know to number it so much loss was incurred in a project where contractors are just sitting and trying to understand how to work in this environment 
right? Because there are so many checks and balances and controls for any change to happen in a company like GE. The bigger the organization, the difficult the process to bring any change. So uh, basically, uh, the knowledge was not totally given, and we suffered heavily. Two months work did not move. Then we escalated up the chain. Then they conducted uh, some very basic induction in terms of how to. Uh, manage systems, how to manage changes to systems, how the release management happens, configuration management happens. So many things were discussed with the vendors and then the work really went forward, right? So uh, this universal application without discrimination say, ah, it doesn't work. I don't have to tell specially to some people. All this is very determinable, right? And so many assumptions, right? The word assume itself means as of out of you and me, A-S-S-U-M-E. Right. When you assume that somebody already knows, that means you are making a ass out of you and out of me. Right. If you are thinking that I know that he thinks he knows, or I know that I know that he knows, you know, all these things are assumptions. Everyone already, everyone knows this already. This is another very bad assumption. As a good manager and employee, you should never assume that somebody already knows everything. You should always tell it again. You know, there's no harm. Share and tell them that this needs to be known, right? Uh, very important. And intentions not known, right? Uh, we have to tell people, you know, what is the intention behind creating a policy? Policies are not to make a company profitable. Policies are made to, made to make sure that the employees following them will make the company profitable, right? So it's not that a travel policy is to tell the employees that you should, uh, you have these, these restrictions. A travel policy is to tell the employees that these are the options available within the budget available given by the customer, right? So we should understand that the intention behind forming any policy is also communicated to the employees uh, sometimes when they ask, rather than just telling what the policy is, right? And even employees have to put some time understanding why the company has set up a policy like this. They should have some meaning behind it. They're expected to follow, not question. But this is another thing. So here is a policy. The manager is sitting there and saying, okay, my employees are supposed to follow this policy. I'm expecting them to follow. Why should I spend time with them? And by the way, you have no right to question. No, every employee can question, of course, in a humble way, asking why, what is the reasoning behind this policy? It's very important, right? So uh, uh, there are many, many policies that companies float but they don't tell the intention why such policy was floated in first place. Then operational problems influence free thinking ability. You know, employees should have enough time, but then most of the time management say, you know what, forget about all those things, innovation. They're too busy with what they have, right? What's in their bag, no time or interest on new things. They just strike it off, which is also very determinal. And no transparency in dealings. Um, companies, they don't you know, uh, do a good transparency to the employees why they are doing what they're doing. Suddenly somebody became a uh, certain senior manager and the management should convey, you know, why this person has become a senior manager because he's achieved X, Y, Z. And here is a plan for the company to use him in certain other roles. So this information is not giving an end and employees are like totally bewildered. And you know? so if they, uh, if we tell them clearly, then they would not want to, uh, want to mature or handle it. So I will not tell it, they should figure it out. That they should figure it out sometimes doesn't work well, especially in companies. It's very important as a manager that you have full knowledge and you're keeping it transparent with employees as much as possible, as much as practical, right? So when you do this five, this, this eight things, uh, if you function like this, the induction program is not important. Lateral hiring is better than, you know, training internally, uh, learnings are no need to share the learnings that much. Universally will apply the same thing without discriminating. We can assume a lot of things. Um, my intentions are mine not to be known by others. Operational problems, you know, um, they are part of life. We, we don't need to fix them. Or finally, no transparency. You know, I don't want to tell uh, beyond a certain point. So all these things will simply make an illusion out of you. If you see the abbreviation, uh, it's I-L-L-U-S-I-O-N, right? I illusion means all these things that I just mentioned. These together are the part of the blame game process in a company. Right, companies don't grow, even managers don't grow when they have this illusion, they're living in this kind of illusion, right? So, did you all understand what we just discussed here? Yes, sir. Any questions? Hmm? Okay, let's go forward. So, again, within the 
yeah, within the knowledge, uh, benefits of having knowledge uh, driven managers, when people are there with good knowledge, right? Um, you can choose who will control you. You can join the internal energy of your organization and you can also uh, consciousness needed to get knowledge, right? What is the consciousness you need to get knowledge? Uh, so these things we'll discuss now. So uh, benefits of having a knowledge driven manager, these are the benefits. Choose who will work you. So indirect control and indirect control, right? Now, when people are following the, uh, when people know the directors and why they have set up this company and what is the goal, and uh, they are aligned with the goal of the company and they are also working accordingly to do their part to for company to achieve those goals, then you don't need too many controls around them. You don't need too many controls because people are already goal driven, organization goal driven. But when people either don't know the goals or they don't value the goals, then you need a lot of controls around them. Uh, management controls, internal controls, so that you can uh, make them work, right? So here, indirect control is when not aligned with the organization goals, then managers are subject to a lot of supervision, hierarchies, and policies. We'll have more status calls than actually work-related calls, right? Which means, for example, your manager is again and again calling you, give me the status, give me the status, which means he is not in command. He is not in, his team is not working for him. He's more like a data collector. Every one week he'll go and ask, oh, tell me what is the progress. That's, and nobody likes to work with such managers. But a real manager means who is in direct control, meaning he's aligned with the organization goals or project goals. Um, supervision is not in priority, right? And uh, manager even gets free hand to operate. He even gives free hand for people to operate because now he has conveyed what needs to be done. And, and uh, he sees some efficient people in the organization and he gives them a free hand. Right, so this is very very important, guys. Okay, um, you know who is uh, choose who will control you. Do you want to be controlled or do you want to be given a free hand? If you want to be given a free hand, then you have to get very close to your managers and give them the confidence that you are a good person to invest on. Right, and next let us come to this energy aspect of the org. Again, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a spiritual concept first, and then I'll explain you how it is relevant to our current organization. There are three kinds of energies, right? Antarangi um, Shakti, uh, Bahirangi Shakti, Tathastha Shakti, right? Which is nothing but internal energy and uh, external energy and Tathastha Shakti. You know, the basically a, a person who can make a choice whether to be in between internal and external energy. We want to be in between, we want to go this side or this side. For example, you're standing beside a river. So you can keep one feet outside outside the water, one feet inside the water. This is called Tatastha. You, are, you still can make a choice whether you want to be in the water or you want to be outside the water. Right? So, spirituality, it explains that uh, Antaranya Shakti includes your spiritual world and, and God and his close associates. Right? So, that's the world there where God lives and his close friends live and, and uh, you know his most favorite people live, etc. So that is the Antaranga Shakti. Everything there is spiritual. Everything there is spiritual. Bahiranga Shakti means illusion energy. This world, you know, this whole world that you see around uh, the mountains, the wood, the metals, the screens, the laptops, the webcams, you know, all these things are material things made of plastic and certain energy. This is also energy of God, but it is not God. So a lot of people say that everything is God. Well, this glass is not God. This steel glass is not God. But it's the energy of God that you should understand. Nothing in the world is there which is not related to God, but nothing, everything is not God. That is also foolishness. People say that everything is God. Anta, Anta Narayana. That is also wrong. You understand there is a difference between energetic and energy. Right? Energetic is God. Energy is, is various opulences. Right? So Bahiranga Shakti means illusionary energy of the uh, illusion energy. One second. Yeah. Yeah, Bhairanga Shakti means uh, uh, basically uh, the energy of God, you know, the illusionary world around, right? And Tatastha Shakti means us, living entities. Now, we can want to live in this world, this beautiful world that you are seeing outside with your eyes, or you can choose to go back to God, you know, the spiritual world. The decision is ours, whether we are in the river or we are outside the river. We can't stand in between with one leg here and one leg there. You have to make a decision which direction you want to go, right? And, and both have their own, you know, people have their own reasons why they want to continue living, uh, taking birth again and again, 
or whether you want to go back to Krishna or God, whichever name you call him, right? So Antaranga Shakti is about the spiritual, Bahinak Shakti is material, Tatasa Shakti is we, you know, we living entities. And we have a choice of either going this side or that side. Now, what is the internal energy of a company? Internal energy of a company are the promoters, the planners, the policy makers, the board of directors, the investors. They are the internal energy of, you know, uh, of the company, right? I'm going to ask a question to all of you. Um, if you are very well aligned with, with the directors and, you know, with the planning that is going on and what exactly are the investors expecting, will you get easily promoted or will it, it's, will, will it, will it make it more difficult for you to get promoted? In your workplace. Hmm? Did you understand the question? I'll repeat it again. It, so it will be difficult. It will be difficult for you to for you to get promoted if you know the promoters and the directors and what their policies are, why they are doing what they are doing. This information yeah, yeah. is it useful or no? That is useful, but it is difficult to get promoted. Why it is difficult to get promoted? Because uh, the expectations increases and uh, you should give your uh, best every time. Well, there's nothing wrong in having good expectations. You see, point is, uh, when you know that the company's promoters want this and uh, the company is to grow like this and you are already aligned with that, then obviously management will want you more than any people who don't know anything about the company, right? So we all should know the internal energy of a company. For example, you, should, you all should know uh, what kind of a leader you have, whether, uh, you know, in case of our company, Satya and Power and, you know, a few other leaders. So you should know them very closely who they are and you should align with them. I'm not saying you should stop your work, go into their cabin and talk. You should align with their goals and try to perform in such a way that organization as a whole is achieving and, and your promoters and directors are also happy. And then you go and spend, when they, give an, when they give you an opportunity to spend time with them, they will tell more and more about their vision for the company. And when you're aligned to the vision, then automatically every company will choose employees who are aligned to the vision for its growth, right? So we should also try to be part of the internal energy of a company, right? And, and uh, as far as external is concerned, uh, promotion, rewards and recognition, hike, travel, all these things are anyway there. They're anyway there. You know, that's external. There is no life in it. You know, there is no happiness in it. Uh, but it is. it will bring happiness when you're connected with the internal energy. Marginal is employees. They can choose whom they want to be surrounded with. Employee can choose, you know, hey, I want to be with my team only. I'm very happy. I don't want to go up the chain. I don't want to understand what a manager is going through, what a president is going through, what others. I don't care. It's their job. I will do what I'm doing. Will such people grow in the company? They will not grow. They will stay where they are, right? So join the internal energy of your, of your organization. You all have to spend some time, even if it's needed, knock, go sit with your leaders and ask them uh, more about this company. And by doing so, they will not feel bad. They'll feel that, oh, this employee is very... Uh, uh, encouraged, very motivated to come and learn, right? So that's something very good, right? Now, consciousness needed to get the knowledge. In order to get the knowledge, we need three important consciousness. One is called enthusiasm or utsaham. Second is called patience or dhairyam. And third is called determination, nishayam. All these three things together are very, very important for us to get the knowledge, right? What is what is enthusiasm? It is to it is to it is needed to learn and do things against the negative forces of today's you know uh, today's workplace, right? So you have to do the right things. Uh, for example, there are some projects where in-person meeting is very very important. So an employee should be so motivated that you know he should try to create an opportunity for the team to come together and work, rather than just taking that as a excuse to not come to work. Uh, when even certain situation is good, they should immediately plan to come to work, right? So that is called enthusiasm. Utsaham is very, like a child is easy to be taken when he's willing. Otherwise, it's going to take a lot of effort, right? If you are going to drag a child, it's so difficult, it's so heavy. But if you just convince the child that this is very important, then the child himself will walk and come, right? So it's very important uh, that 
we all don't succumb to this negative force in the organization and we go towards positive force in the organization. Next is patience or dhairyam. We all need to be patient. Perfection doesn't come in a day. Perfection doesn't come in a night. You have to work hard and you have to continuously work hard to get that perfection. Right? <clears throat> Somebody saying, who's this? Okay, Murli. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to join other call, uh, Lakshman. Sorry. Sure, I, sure, sure. I need to drop off. Thank you. Yes, please, Thank you. Please, for very good here. session. I think, uh, please continue. And then yeah. uh, you can, like, if you don't mind, if you can share that this PPT also is very nice. Yes, yes, yes. I'll share the recording. We'll share the recording. You can go through it. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So, patience is very, very important. For you to become senior in your roles, you need to have a lot of patience. Actually, the people who reach the top are the most patient people who, are, who have gone through a lot and who are ready to learn at every step of their careers, right? So patience includes, uh, this is the one thing most, uh, most difficult things that we find today, as I told. One is to have strong determination to get enthusiasm and patience. And what is determination? Determination means nishchayam, right? Uh, this comes up when we link our work to a higher purpose. How, how uh, what do you call that, determined are you to achieve your goals? Okay. Now, for one moment, I will stop the screen share and let's spend a little time on determination. So, tell me what is the driving factor for all of you to come to work? What is the driving factor? And how are you maintaining the determination to achieve the goals that you have set for yourself? Right. So, I'm asking two questions, all of you. Okay. Um, this, this will do it a little interactive way. What is the driving factor for you to come to work? Number one right? What is the driving factor? Why? What is motivating you to come to work? Right? And uh, the second thing that I want you to tell is, are you really motivated right now? Right? And are you on the path to achieve? How do you maintain that enthusiasm all the time? How do you maintain the drive all the time, the determination all the time? Right? Think about it for a minute. I'll just get some more water. I finished my water in my class. So I'll just go and get it. Okay, so I'll just off my audio and my video for a couple of minutes, but I'm giving you homework before I go. And when I come back, let's on our cameras and let's think about it. What is the determination? Um, what is the determination I have to come to this workplace every day? And how am I achieving that, right? So I'll be back. Please start thinking. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Thank you. So, uh, please, I request all of you to open your screens for some time. Thank you, Durga. Come on, guys. Let's. It's, it's afternoon. We don't want to just keep, uh, you know, black screens in front of us. You also like to see each other, right? So, just open the screens wherever you are. Yeah, great. Yeah. Come on, everybody. You don't have to be told again and again. Let's just do it. Right? Yeah. So I'm asking you a question. 
what is the driving factor for you to come to office do you have one or you don't you have one money responsibilities Money. 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 Yes. Somebody was very sincere in saying money. <laughs> of course, money. Right? Responsibilities and commitments. Huh? Responsibility and commitment. Yes. Come on, others. Come on. On your cameras. You know, please. Let's make it more uh, interactive and uh, don't worry what's in your background. Having a strong team environment is my determination. Yeah. Having a good strong team. Of course, money is very important. On on the thirty first of the month, you need to get that SMS with that sound. Ting, that sound should come. Means we are we are determined. That's right. You know that is something that uh, you know Dharma in our team is taking care of finance. He is the one who runs the payroll. So the ting goes to everybody's phone. That is okay. But what is that? What is the determination? I think Vanaja is not showing up, but her sound is too much. One second, I just mute her. Yeah, I'm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. learning new things hmm learning new things learning new things yeah. learning new things yeah. okay i'll tell you all guys a story okay it really happened with me i was in san jose okay and it it really helps when i see all of your faces huh? please stay there for some more time because i can speak i i know that some people are listening to me right rather than the black boxes so i'll tell you the story okay uh this happened in 2013 2013 sometime in may May two thousand thirteen. I remember I was in San Jose, in California, and uh, there was this millionaire, uh, Indian millionaire, a Silicon Silicon company, Silicon Valley company owner. You can imagine a millionaire, and a huge mansion he has in mountains. Or uh, outside the city, there is a there is a mountain. There are many hills. That fellow bought the entire hill. Can you believe it? He bought the entire hill, like a literally huge hill, and his house was on the top. and the whole hill that comes down he converted that into a garden so literally he goes down the garden and he sits down anywhere he wants fountains and everything you know very big millionaire now what he did he was also a practicing spiritual life so he happened to be inspired with my guru i have a guru and uh, he was inspired by this spiritual monk so he called the spiritual monk to come and give a talk in his house right so he called the spiritual monk to come and give a discourse like a talk and he also called his friends so who will be the friends of a millionaire millionaires right many many millionaires and billionaires they all came to that place right so here is so i'm setting the scene for you here is a big mountain in the garden and we are sitting just outside the house and with lot of you know people sitting in that garden area and believe me the net worth of that house that day with all those people coming in would be nothing less than 50 billion dollars that is the net worth i'm talking about right people stinkingly rich people right they came there and actually many of we think only about uh, satya nadella or uh, what is that google uh, uh, sundar pichai sundar pichai or you know some of these names and we think that they are rich and all that trust me the rich people are not the ones we see in the magazines the rich people are the investors right how many of you know that there are venture capitalists you don't know their names but they are the real money spinners they are the people who float companies they are the people who buy infosys buy wipro buy tcs buy you know ibms behind the ibms behind the accentures these venture capitalists are sitting they whenever they want they'll buy this company and they will get the profits and get out from there right you wouldn't even know their names you wouldn't even know their names you'll only see the md of the company is falana falana person you know director of the company is falana falana we don't know the venture capitalists so on this in this evening all these most of the people who are sitting there were venture capitalists right really rich people and uh, they came to that seminar now who is giving the talk a spiritual monk is giving a talk a spiritual monk you know a person who doesn't even have a bank account <laughs> he doesn't even have his own bank account he doesn't have any money on him no passbook no checkbook you know he lives for whatever he gets to eat right a monk now a monk is giving a session to the most elite a uh, community of leaders right uh, rich business leaders that is the situation so after hearing the situation that that the, i still remember the talk it was about values in business how people need to carry their values in their business world that was the session about right so uh, so after the whole session got over one gentleman one billionaire one billionaire he got up he said i have a question sir 
uh, Swami ji, I have a question like that he asked. So I was the one actually recording the program. I had the responsibility of recording the program. So I was holding the camcorder and <laughs> moving here and there. So this, this person names apart is one of the biggest billionaires of in the Silicon Valley. So he told the Swami, you know, uh, the person who was giving the talk, my guru who was speaking there. He asked him, sir, I have a problem and I don't know how to solve the problem. Uh, it's a big business problem. He told like that. And immediately my guru, he told, I'm a monk. I don't have money. Neither I know how to make money. How can I solve your business problem? Business problem, you should, you know better. You have better knowledge. If you have some questions in Bhagavad Gita, you ask me. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to answer. Then this rich person told, no, no, sir. It's actually a very practical problem. Here is a problem. When I came to America in 1970s, when I came to America from India, he's an Indian. When in 1970s, when I came to America, I, I came here with hardly hundred dollars, you know, worth money. I got that much money uh, when I came to India, when I came to America from India, a you know, few thousand rupees, right? And in those days, dollar was hardly 12 rupees or 11 rupees, you know, uh, a dollar. So you can think he might have bought like thousand rupees, thousand Indian rupees with him when he came to America. So he was saying, I came to this country and uh, I did so many businesses. I failed in some, I gained in some. But look, look at me after, uh, after 30 years in this country, my net worth, my net worth is 1 billion. He was saying, you know, $1 billion, right? That's like $1,000 million, isn't it? So he's like, my net worth is 1 billion. Uh, uh, and, and he was like, uh, you know, so, so the question is, I have only one son. He said, I have only one son, only one child. That fellow has got no interest in my business. <laughs> like he has no interest in my business. My net worth is 1 billion. I am telling my son that in the next five years, he should make this 1 billion into 1.2 billion. Right? And I'm asking him to join with me. And he's not interested. <coughs> he's not interested. He just, all the time he keeps buying new cars. He goes around with his friends, parties, not interested in business only. And neither is he doing any great courses. He has no goal in life. I don't understand how can I motivate him. So Swamiji, please tell me, uh, how can I bring my son and make him run my business? That is a question. <laughs> right? Make my $1 billion business into $1.2 billion in the next five years. That is the target. right? So $200 million more something like that. So just imagine, you know, um, what can a Swami give an answer for this, right? And uh, if, we, if you people are thinking, if some of us think that, you know, these people going around in big Benz cars or uh, convertible Audis and these people don't have problems in life. They are bigger problems in life. <laughs> they have bigger problems in life than us, right? So his problem is he has created this 1 billion empire and he is already nearing his 70s. And his son is not interested in his empire. So what will happen to the entire empire after he dies? Right? Nobody knows what will happen to it. So and, and his son is not motivated to grow it. So then he was asking, you know, what can be done? Then uh, before, before I give the answer, the Swami gave, you know, uh, I would want to ask all of you, what do you think can be a driving factor for that son to come and make that 1 billion into 1.2 billion dollars. My question to all of you before was, what is the driving factor for you to come to office? Right? So now my question is, I'm not asking you, I'm asking what would be your answer to that billionaire that Baya do these things to make your son get motivated to make that 1 billion into 1.2 billion. Did you all get my question, everybody? Uh, yes. Okay. So let's spend the next few minutes understanding uh, what do you think should be done? He should uh, start a company with uh, cars, like a cousin, um, making of cars. He should, he should start a car company? Yes. Okay, like uh, what is it? Uh, new Concept. car company? Tesla. Tesla. Yeah, yeah. New company. <laughs> the big Anyone billionaire. is having money, right? Yes. You can make, so you can start a car company. Okay. What is what are the ideas? 
but he's not interested to work only that fellow is all the time going around with his friends in his convertibles and uh, you know is going around in his private jet you know uh, going to mauritius you know all these places enjoying life why would he want to come and set up and work hard for a car company what kind of drive can you give uh he should also start uh, enjoying and spending the life so that his son can realize after that uh, if his father also spends uh, too much money uh, he would be nowhere left <laughs> so, so you're telling that his father <laughs> they're telling that the father should spend all the money so son will not have anything left so he'll come and work <laughs> <laughs> good work <laughs> <laughs> boy, you boy. Yeah, come on, the value of the money sir should huh? know the value of the money uh, how of his the father money. is you know spending the money and how he am a billionaire and all so he has to know the value of the rupee so that uh, he will start thinking how to uh, build a, a company and he just want to uh, uh, you know take the company to the next level then only mm-hmm. uh, the company can run okay value of the money but okay Uh, but for him you know in every pocket there is uh, 10 10000 dollars in every time so how do you teach a fellow who has got 10000 dollars here 10000 dollars is the value of money <laughs> i don't know so it's a good thought but i'm still wondering what would be a driving factor for him to convert that 1 billion dollar company to 1.2 billion dollars company come on think you know it's afternoon guys you know i know you had we all had lunch i can't see you what you are doing <laughs> I, i can see that every room is dark you all have switched off your lights <laughs> uh, if he get more money uh, he can enjoy more <laughs> that money if he get more money he can enjoy more okay so that's one good motivation hmm okay thank you what so else maybe see the the main thing is his father spoiled him when he was child maybe that could be the reason see he didn't told the values or the money value when he was child he might have given him lot of monies when he was in the childhood and that's when he spent money and he doesn't respect the money or doesn't value the money right now and he doesn't know the value of the money maybe he should teach him a lesson where he knows the value of money and all those things is what i uh, i believe lakshman hmm good one thank you durga yes no wonder he is spoiled he is a spoiled brat right from his childhood he would have got so much money that uh, okay so here now let's get on to the answers because there is no unlimited time time is limited so i'll get on to the answer so guys this is what the spiritual monk told him right the spiritual monk asked him what service do you do to the society he asked him what service do you do to the society do you do you give any months for you know money for charity do you do anything else apart from earning billions of dollars right so he told yes there is a blind school i support i i fund that foundation so that whenever there are eyes available i uh, you know i sponsor for the operations right uh, my foundation it sponsors for the operations and then uh, he told i also i also uh, print a uh, lot of literature to give it free in the in the schools you know uh, especially schools where children can't uh, afford books i i print them and i uh, you know supply it to them very high quality books like that so then the monk asked him so you are a 1 billion dollar company today so how many i operations are you sponsoring how many i operations you are sponsoring on an average he told see i kept a budget for myself that 1% of my 1% of my earnings i will give it for charity right so if i am 1 billion dollars i give 1 million 1 million for my uh, sorry 10 10 million i give 10 million for my charity for for fixing the eyes then he asked okay with 10 million how many people's eyes do you fix how many operations he said around maybe 150 100 150 operations so then he asked that does your son also come when you do this charity programs he said no he never came you know it's something that i do right something like that i do then he said 
then the monk tried to explain him that see you are making money whatever technology business you are doing keep it apart but you are also doing something for the society and are you not getting good satisfaction when you give this money for i those eye operations for poor people do you get satisfaction he said yes i get a lot of satisfaction in fact i feel that i should do more in fact i want to do more but because of my shareholders i know i cannot put too much money into that i am limited so then he then the monk told why don't you motivate your son not by telling him that convert this 1 billion to 1.2 billion instead of that why don't you motivate your son by telling him i am serving 150 uh patients you know poor people with new eyes right through the operations i want to make it 500 can you can you help me do it right a, a different way of putting the same target instead of saying make that 1 billion to 1.2 billion why don't you say i'll convert this 150 eye operations to 500 eye operations and then the monk explained the logic there he said see your son is already seen money your son has already seen money right for him money cannot be motivation for money right i mean guy has already seen he is already in a convertible he has friends he has a private jet he is going around the world he is enjoying what motivation will he have to convert 1 billion to 1.2 billion yeah i don't see a motivation there it has to be something higher than that it has to be something some service oriented motivation isn't it like for example you, you are you are eating gulab jamun first gulab jamun will be very nice second is good third is okay but fourth is a burden now <laughs> fourth gulab jamun why will you have and like come on come on i am already filled i don't want to eat no no eat one more your target is 10 so what nonsense you know target are you saying i am i'm happy with two i don't want no no your target is 10 so this is how your son is feeling when you say that make more money he is already happy with 1 billion if you have 1 billion dollars i'm going to ask all of you you know on the call right now if you have forget about 1 billion if you have 50 crores in your bank account will you work in this company yes sir let's run i'm not going to work ashwin can you hear me yeah i can hear you <laughs> yeah, 50 is too heavy 10 is enough 10 <laughs> is enough that <laughs> yeah, 10 is enough <laughs> right so the point that i'm trying to make is you know there has to be something more right uh, and when you're already getting so much why do you have to do what you're doing of course i'm not saying your work is not interesting you would do what you want to do you would still work you can't sit in the house you know wearing a lungi and a coffee that is not going to work for too long eventually you will go outside and do something but you will do something that you like to do isn't it so here is the son of a billionaire who is already having 1 billion dollars and already having so much pocket money why will he be motivated to make another 0.2 billion 0.2 million 0.2 billion dollars right then actually that uh, businessman got really impressed he said i'll definitely try it out and he actually told that after some time when he met his son and he tried to work it out he told when i explained my idea i took him to this blind school and i showed him the operations that we do and way we support it and i told him that i want to make this 150 operations in a year to 500 operations i want to do that and in order to do that our company turnover has to grow from 1 billion to 1.2 billion my son told why 1.2 billion why can't we make it 2 billion and why can't we make this 100 operations into 1000 operations now i am going to work i will make sure that our company will double and we will do more you know uh, service to this poor kids who lose eyes from their childhood we can help them sponsor more and more medical facilities right so are you all understanding what what i just told yeah, yeah? what we discussed just now is that motivation to a job sometime necessarily doesn't have to be the job itself it has to be related to something higher it has to be related to something higher right when it is some when it is related to something higher automatically even this becomes important and automatically you will also perform something uh something with more passion and interest you will do it when you see that this is related to something else right so when i say what is your driver to come to the workplace it doesn't have to be the salary that you draw it doesn't have to be only the recognition and rewards that you get 
it can be something more than that right and as a leader a leader is always looking at that more than that factor right the more than that factor that i will i will try to do something in relation to the what i am doing which will become an indirect driver for me to come and achieve more at my workplace are you all following what i'm saying yeah, yeah, like you all have to find that we, you it's a quest of life right you all have to find out what what way you will you will be able to do that that that's your own journey right i'm not saying charity is the only way i'm not saying spirituality is the only way but as leaders we have to find out what is the drive that i have to come to work not only here anywhere you are what is the drive and how can i be a better employee and what is the driving force like i'll share one of the drives that i have personally is i i like to see people becoming good speakers and i want to keep motivating people become a good speaker because one speaker can affect the lives of many and i i myself i'm trying to become a good speaker i'm not a good speaker i'm trying to become a good speaker but i see that that's a very much important quality that people need today and i want i want many experienced people to come and share their experience rather than just you know work 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 also share your experiences right so you can motivate the next generation right and i like to see people you know spending more time on charitable activities on service activities how can i motivate more people like from our office for example how nice would it be if we as all you know employees you know 100 plus employees that we are we together take up a social objective and also serve that along with our jobs right and that makes it more meaning to stay here and grow in this company right there has to be something attached to what we are doing a driving factor a determination determination comes through a higher goal right and a higher goal can also transform into sometimes business relevant goal for example i am going to this customer i have i am doing you know a certain amount of business like 10 crores business with this customer i want to add value so much to that customer that the customer gives me more but i am also going to give something that is very useful to the customer some freebie or a solution or something like that right what is the drive for me to go to the office every day some kind of a target some kind of a target that i keep that's what great managers do great managers always have the, always have those big targets right so coming back to the slide that i was showing determination nischayam this is like you know we link our work for the higher purpose so this is also knowledge everybody should have that higher purpose and then what will happen the small problems in your workplace will not bother you little little things will not bother you you will also focus on higher things right so that's very very important are you, are you all following what is, what i'm saying yeah lakshmi to in order to get the knowledge you need to have enthusiasm utsaham patience dhairyam determination nischayam all these three things are needed for you to get good knowledge right and knowledge will help you grow which i discussed in the previous slides right there are a lot of things so we discussed about one pillar today is that knowledge for a manager knowledge is one of the pillars right so knowledge should bring clarity fundamental questions it should bring clear clarity as to who am i where am i what is expected from me where do i want to go what are the steps what are the obstacles on that steps after reaching what i experience do this questions sound logical all of you who am i where am i what is expected from me what do i want to do what are the steps what are the obstacles on my steps after reaching what i experience do we have information of all these things no in uh, most of us don't in fact spirituality is about this only right when there are so many i am the soul not the temporary body but i am not going to get into the spiritual answers because that you know that's not the objective of this seminar when you read bhagavad gita or when you read some spiritual books you get answers for these questions who am i where am i what is expected from me right where am i going what happens after death what happens after birth who is deciding my next birth all these things will get answered very clear and scientific answers to all the questions you will get when you read bhagavad gita when you are when you learn it properly but the same thing in the corporate world we also need to have answers for this even in the office who am i right 
what is my role my i am this role and i am in this function with this skill right where am i i am in this organization in this particular department in this particular project what is expected from me top management's vision is this and they have hired me to contribute in this way right and where do i want i want to become this is what i want to become in future right in this role in this and i want to contribute to the organization this way right what are the uh, what are the next steps i will get trained in this particular skills i will take up this trainings i'll take up this project i will be i'll i'll choose a mentor what are the obstacles i think my lack of enthusiasm or patience or i don't have a proper goal these are my problems and after reaching what will i achieve i'll achieve I, i think i'll achieve women satisfaction at my workplace right so guys if you see these questions are very very important not only in spirituality but also in your own company see tomorrow morning when you are coming to your workplace you should know why you are coming right what in what way can i make a big difference to this company how many of you have thought in what way can i make a big difference to this company right and that is when you can become a leader i'll tell you one instance in i was i used to work in this company called satyam computers i am sure most of you know this right satyam computers in 2002 to 2005 3 years i was in satyam computers during that time one employee names apart you know uh, this person came and uh, he introduced something called data warehousing right in the we had a group called eabis enterprise applications right and business information systems that was one of the big groups within satyam computers so he introduced something called data warehousing lot of people were like what is data warehousing he got this concept you know that was just then famous in the in the in the world and he brought it and said uh, why don't we create some expertise on data warehousing so we can uh, try to uh, give customers more value you know right now our customers we are only implementing erps application sap oracle people soft jd edwards like that why don't we also do data warehousing so a lot of people were not very motivated they said oh, you know what you are unnecessarily bringing a concept which may not work we cannot become expertise in that so then what he did is he actually he himself got trained on his own after the office hours in data warehousing and then he developed two three people who could also perform in data warehousing and then he started a small team for data warehousing and then you would not believe just in a matter of few months he started getting projects and he started encouraging the current customers to also take up certain projects in data warehousing and just in a matter of time he became one of the most prominent leaders in satyam computers just in a matter of time people are working in satyam computers for the last uh, you know by then itself it was more than a 10 year old company now it's more than now it's tech mahindra right so people work in companies for 20 years 15 years but only few people become those leaders because those leaders are the people who take that risk of introducing things uh, which nobody else does and they have a passion for doing it and they have a motto that i want to do something for the company does anyone know what made sundar pichai the ceo of google what did he do does he have good english speaking skills or good management skills what made him the ceo of google hmm oh uh, you created a, a space or what is that um, memory uh, in uh, G- gmail something something like that okay you worked on it and then google maps mm-hmm. but it is something very very great he might have also done those but something that he did which changed the whole business of google he is the one who developed the browser chrome right chrome now when when he started developing the browser called chrome he didn't name it chrome he started developing it at that time you know a lot of people in his office told why do we need a browser we already have internet explorer we already have internet explorer why do we need a, you know a browser right uh, 
so one minute guys i have to take this important call sorry about this Yeah, so I'm back. So all I'm saying is, you know, when he told that he wants to develop a browser, then he was told even within the Google community that why do you need a browser? Already Internet Explorer is there. Google is a search engine. Google is a search engine. It can work on any browser. We don't have to focus on browser. Let us work. Let us focus more on searching capabilities and storing capabilities. Right. But this person, he kept his own hours. You know, certain hours in a week were, were, were given for innovative solutions. So on his own enthusiasm, he developed Chrome. And when he finally brought that Chrome into the mainstream of Google, today Google works on Chrome. You can imagine, right? What kind of a, a platform that he created that there's the whole possibilities of Google just went up way, way high. And that is the reason he is made the CEO of the company. Not because his qualification, not be, just because of the quality, the quality that, that I'm talking about here, the knowledge that he brought on the, brought on the table, the enthusiasm, utsaham, dhairyam, nishchayam. These are the things that made him what he is. And these are the things that have made many people into great leaders in every company. Every, every leader has a history and every loser also has a past, right? So he did it. And, uh, and, th and that's what I'm saying. He, you should have clarity, my dear friends, in this office, you should have clarity on what do you want to do. I have clarity what I want to do. I, let me be very, very open about it. I'm doing this presentation not for theory. All these things I have tried to apply in my life. I'm not saying I'm a perfect leader yet, but it gives me a lot more clarity. What am I doing in Lorhan? What is my contribution going to be in Lorhan? Right? And uh, what do I want to give back to this company? I have full clarity. Do you all have that clarity? If you don't have that clarity, then let me tell you, you cannot become those leaders. You will be one among those people who will just come into one company and go from here. Or you'll stay here and just remain what you are. Yes, your salary might increase. Yes, your role might change. But you'll never be happy. You'll never be satisfied. right? Because you have not done something that you like to do. Are you all understanding what I'm saying? Right? You should have some clarity. Right? What are you planning to give? Then you'll then you'll find that satisfaction. So the clarity, knowledge is equal to clarity in answers. Every manager should have these answers. Why am I in the organization? Some knowledge that can avoid. What are the, what is the knowledge that you can avoid in a company? Anybody? What knowledge you can avoid? Hmm? What knowledge is bad for you? Hello? Come on, give it a try. What knowledge is bad for you? I'll give one. I'll give one. Okay, I have all of them there. <laughs> so... I didn't, I didn't should they work for long time when they are paying less amount? Huh? That, no, is there? Why I'm asking what work? is that? Yeah. Why should you, why should you work for a long time when they are paying less amount? Is that a knowledge? No. I'm asking about knowledge that you should avoid. Okay, simple in the interest of time, avoid politics, avoid rumors. Avoid salaries of others. Don't go and ask people how much are they paying you, right? How somebody got lucky? How come he got chosen in certain position? 
who is that good looking who just joined <laughs> why do you want to know that huh? religious customs of somebody somebody you know so why is that sir coming with a big tilak is he religious he wants to show that he is religious how does it matter to you whether i come in a tilak or i come in a you know with a big pagadi how does it matter right or anybody in the office it doesn't matter right and uh, what are competitors are paying to the same employees right these all things are not important for you this knowledge is not needed that's what i'm saying what is the knowledge you should have is the knowledge of these questions who am i where am i what is expected from me where do i want to go in life what are the steps what are the obstacles and how, what is the, what is it going to experience after i achieve this right that knowledge is more important so not about all this unnecessary knowledge right beware of negative association on the floor who are interested only to acquire and spread nonsense this is also very important if you want to become a leader if you want to be a good manager and have the right knowledge okay so now we have spoken a lot of things about knowledge so let's quickly summarize so there are three pillars for a manager i told right knowledge conviction and compassion we are yet to speak about conviction and compassion we just finished the knowledge in knowledge what did we say three kinds of knowledge we should have sambandha gyan abhideya gyan prayojana gyan i know it's afternoon you might have already forgotten this but i'm just giving a recap right so we discussed about these three things next join what internal energy or external energy you want to join the internal energy of the company or external energy of the company internal energy so you can work according to the goal set with the promoters investors and you can actually grow with the company rather than just being one of the departments in the company join with the internal energy next choose who will who you want to control right like either you want to be controlled with too many policies or work according to the vision of the promoters and nobody needs to control you you will be given a free hand you can go and do whatever you want to do right and consciousness that you have to that you need to get more knowledge enthusiasm patience and determination all these three things are needed for you to get more knowledge and finally knowledge should bring clarity knowledge should bring clarity what is the clarity who am i where am i what is expected from me at my workplace what do i want to do in this company what are the steps i have to follow in order to achieve that what are the obstacles that i am going to face and after achieving what will i experience right are you all clear on knowledge my dear friends are you clear or is it i know it's too much but i request you to hear the presentation once again sometime when you are free so that you grasp what all i have told here it's a big topic knowledge sure lakshmi sure. okay okay let's keep going yeah foundation actually you know i must say this this seminar was designed for you know like senior managers and leaders mainly because they are the ones who have to dwell into this but i'm also doing it for all the employees because you know you all will have something to learn as you all progress becoming a, a leader right so some of you it might be a very boring session with too much fundas that i'm speaking right uh, but just hold on and try to grasp whatever you can out of it okay so the second pillar is conviction first pillar was knowledge conviction it's very very important what is the meaning of the word conviction a firmly held belief or opinion you are not going to leave it you are going to hold it very very strong because that is what is the driving factor for your success right but what brings that conviction in a manager to manage well this is my question to all of you what brings that conviction for you what brings it hmm? how do you get that conviction anybody okay interest of time theoretical knowledge when turned into practice brings conviction right faith and deep understanding harness conviction meaning see you are all hearing whatever i am speaking right now every friday you are going to tolerate me every friday i am going to show you something something different i am going to speak among the everybody who is attending this one person will say okay let me try to implement what he told right let me try to implement at least one part of what he told whatever i heard in the training that person will get conviction conviction means what a strong opinion and belief and a manager should have conviction in life a manager means somebody who has conviction in life i want to do it i want to achieve this 
right so theoretical knowledge will not bring but when you practice it it develops into conviction you are following me did you understand the meaning of conviction yes, an sir. experience an experience that gives you that that feeling that you want to do it an experience when you do it only you will get it just by sitting here and attending you can attend 1000 seminars but unless you apply even one principle you will not get that conviction and a manager is somebody who gets that conviction so what is the driving what is driving us to manage people what is driving us to manage people hmm? if i ask a manager what is the driving you to manage people and say for pleasure of the superiors you know or to achieve results i want to drive people or i want to develop my own career or i want to share my experience with my subordinate that is a driving factor you know for following the organization policies and procedures i am driving people managing people uh, why are you a project manager because i am managing the project yes. <laughs> something like that why are you a manager because people are given to me you know people think like that there is no what is what is the drive that you have all these things merely show obedience to authority meaning you are asked to do something you are doing it that's all isn't it you are asked to do something you are doing it you are a manager you have to manage people i am managing people you are a project manager okay i am managing the project you are a project lead okay i am managing but what is that drive there should, there has to be something higher than this there has to be something higher than this and that is nothing but there has to be a better way to know if i have conviction to serve as a manager right it's very important there has to be conviction to serve as a manager and that is self examination of our own conviction how often we question ourselves right do we do we even assess am i having the conviction to grow in this company am i am i having the conviction to be a good manager do you even think like that if you great managers do great leaders do think like that so if we are not thinking then we will not going to achieve that see every appraisal you can't come and say i want 50% high 40% well what is the conviction for your job you have you can't even define your own conviction right so we have to think is this current work please focus on this conviction you know the examination is this current work i am doing the real way to achieve my dreams do you have that conviction like right now the job that i am doing is going to make me achieve my dreams do you have that conviction if you don't have then i don't know what you are doing here or anywhere for that matter right you need to have that conviction that yes if i keep doing what i'm doing i'll achieve my dreams long term dreams short term dreams whatever that you have how many in my team peers have i inspired to make them continue in the company this is a very important thing see if you are working in a company and talking bad about this company would you like to work in this company hmm you are sitting with your colleagues and say kya company are bekar company you know I, what a company tha, that company is good if you speak like that can you work nicely in this company hmm? unfortunately lot of people today they speak like this when i come to the office and when i open my computer and i see the financials of the company whatever that we do in my phone function i want to make this company into big company i want to make this company into a very successful company that's what is my driving factor do you have the driving factor if you don't have the driving factor how can you become a leader of this company <coughs> how can you be, if you see if you see pavan you know in the office i'm sure you would have seen pavan in the office i'm not saying because you know i like the way he works but have you seen the drive that he carries how many of you seen the drive that he carries to run around do whatever it takes to get the next project even during corona times when everybody is in the office everybody is in the home he used to come alone to the office and somehow get some new business right that's very important the drive the drive to achieve it the drive to uh, do something for the company to drive to motivate people to stay in the company drive to inspire people to do something for the company see if you don't have it in you then you are not going to achieve great results that's what i'm trying to tell today's session is managing with what managing with knowledge conviction and compassion meaning i really want all of you to become great leaders whether or not you are with larhan or any company doesn't matter 
you can be tomorrow in any company but if you don't have these three things knowledge conviction and compassion you cannot grow you cannot grow don't be like that you know somebody who just walks into another company another company another company another company and finally one day you'll retire what will you do with those experience letters of 25 companies that you spent in what is what is the real experience that you would want to share with your sons and grandsons and your friends and everybody is what you have done for the other companies is that true hmm tell me what is more interesting to tell what the company has done for you or what you have done for the company what we have done for the company right that is more interesting right when you go and tell that you know yes i have done forget about the company name lorhan infosys wipro forget about it company names keep changing in in uh, in in commerce you know we have this uh, company name it's called a legal entity it's called a legal entity in commerce language a artificial legal entity created with a with a memorandum of association and articles of association anybody can form a company with any name that's not important what you have done for an organization how many people have you motivated hmm? how many friends have you helped to build up their careers how many friends have you built right really matters in whatever do i have the faith in the management is knowledge on goals policies procedure and personal increasing my faith see guys if you are in this company and you don't know much about the vision of the company mission it's about time you better go and speak to your manager or if you are a manager go and speak to the leadership because if you don't then you are not going to be part of the company you cannot contribute much to the company right very very important this is a very important foundation organization has managers who don't carry conviction to serve then it's trouble confirmed to both the team and company confirmed if you don't have the conviction which comes out of applying the great principles then you cannot contribute to the company did you all understand the aspect of conviction guys we discussed about knowledge now we discussed about conviction right is is it clear what does conviction mean yes lakshman Yes. i know these are deep subject matters it's not easy but just get into your mind little bit whatever that you are understanding that knowledge knowledge of what sambandha gyan abhideya gyan prayojana gyan relationships between the great you know important things in your company process that you follow to achieve your goals and the goal itself what are the goals that you want to achieve these all things is knowledge right and you should have the enthusiasm patience and determination to get that knowledge and third and and next is conviction applying that knowledge and getting more and more conviction to achieve the results within the company and do something by your own right now let us go to compassion now compassion is very very important guys compassion means actually worrying for others actually thinking about others compassion word itself uh, in english dictionary means a story a, sorry a strong feeling of sympathy and sadness for the suffering or bad luck of others and a wish to help them right when you see others they are they are going through tough times you should become compassionate and you want to help them come out of it right not find happiness when somebody is suffering we are not we are not uh, you know we don't get upset looking at others succeed we should become in sanskrit we say para dukha dukhi para dukha dukhi meaning you you become very sad when you see others sad do we have that quality do we have that quality if we don't then we should develop it that is what will make us a great leader and a great manager right para dukha dukhi compassion people are managing and people others are managing right true compassion cannot be restricted to a group of people right you cannot say oh i am very compassionate to my team i am very compassionate to my company people no compassion is not limited to a certain group compassion is to the it's your consciousness you carry wherever you go true compassion person cannot wait to serve others in trouble he will go ahead and do whatever is needed everybody on the floor he'll keep affecting not only in your own company but even the companies beside your door you will go ahead and help them compassion is a very important quality my friends and we all should develop it what other managers look from you right look what do they look from you they want to see you walk your talk 
they want to see conviction in you they want to see your willingness to collaborate and they want to see how you are reacting to provoking situations right our ability to forgive others mistakes is a great mark of compassion when somebody does any mistake you know how to forgive that and forget it right and that's a great mark of so we should learn forgiveness one of the things as a manager as a leader you should learn is how to forgive and go forward some acts that don't show compassion on others what kind of acts for example being judgmental right you even if before you give something to somebody you already conclude ha ah, he can't do it hey, she is useless this fellow is you know not very responsible of course you form an opinion but then too much too much judge being judgmental also is not good that's not that's not what a compassionate person does right compassionate persons keep keep giving opportunities <coughs> how many of you how many of you plan to become jobless at your workplace okay let me ask this question again you know how many of you please answer this question it will it will make you think but your answer is going to really help you grow how many of you plan to become jobless at your workplace what does it mean you should be such a leader that whether or not you are there the work should go on that is what it means that i want to become jobless at my workplace then you are a leader if you are such a kind of leader that if you don't come to work all the work will stop then you are not a leader are you all following what i'm saying did you understand yeah. what i'm saying yeah yeah yes. yeah right if you are such a kind of leader that hey this fellow is not are baap re you know the whole project will go for it or nothing will move then i think there's something missing you are not the kind of course sometimes some roles are individual contributory roles but when i'm telling you are a manager when you are a manager you should put yourself or make yourself to such a point that even if you don't turn up not that i'm saying you should not turn up you should you should make it self driven right and that will happen and how will you achieve that guys whatever i told how will you achieve that by delegating by encouraging by encouraging and delegating by taking some risks calculative risks right on 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 making others do some challenging tasks and you become jobless when you become jobless is it a good news for the management or bad news for the management good news they can give you the more task to work on exactly yes. see that's what a lot of people think that you know if i'm if if i'm very if i'm very dependent in organization dependent on me then i am a very important person no the most important person in organization is somebody who is always available for something new he is always available for something new he put him into 20 things he'll still come and say okay sir let me do something new or can i try this hey what happened to all those things no that's all taken care don't worry and that don't worry should not happen just as a fluke you actually make sure that everything is taken care then you are a great leader you are following what i'm saying if you are so busy with what you are doing how will the organization give you an opportunity to grow huh and like okay you know i want to i want to make you grow so how will you grow right one minute guys you know somebody is trying to come to my house is continuously calling me how to take this call Oh boy, this is the problem. When somebody is trying to come to your home, you know the security, and you know if you don't answer the call, they just keep waiting for you. Yeah. So one is being judgmental. If you are being judgmental, you can't delegate. Can you delegate when you are judgmental, guys? You can delegate. You need you need an open heart to delegate more. Also, you know, expecting perfection again a big disease that people carry. Everything that person should do perfectly. It is not possible. People have different styles of doing things. 
if you if you expect others to be perfect like you that means the big problem is you think that you are perfect you are also not perfect but you want people to exactly perform like you perform then that's a big obstacle for you to grow and you're not being compassionate you all following what i'm saying yes no yes uh, difficult yeah nahi bahut logo ko samajh mein nahi aa raha mere khayal se how how is expecting perfection opposite to compassion because you are killing somebody else's individual abilities by being perfect 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 you know this mouse has to be kept like this only this glass has to be kept like this only nobody can work with you nobody can work with you inspire people to adopt what you do but if you expect that perfection from everyone then you cannot basically make your own team you cannot make being very pushy pushy push, push that is also not needed make yourself available and and give them the time of course you should have your checks and balances once in a day you should have a call with your team and make sure you understand the whole picture just with few questions don't ask 20 status reports 20 status reports are not needed your two three questions should tell you where you stand that is being a smart manager right being good sometimes right is not is not a good quality being good always is a good quality right we are not compassionate to others when we are not concerned for them we have to be concerned for them right when there is no knowledge so see the linkage when there is no knowledge there is no conviction and there cannot be compassion all these three things are linked knowledge conviction compassion people are not impressed by stories or your role model they want to see those qualities in you right your managers you as manager should show those qualities to your subordinates <clears throat> okay managing without compassion is like animal rights this is a good example managing without compassion is like animal rights activist appreciating slaughter houses for meat right on one side is saying save the lion save the tiger other side is eating chicken biryani what does it mean what does it mean huh? on one side you are trying to be animal activist on other side you are trying to be animal you know whatever uh, you, you really don't care about it so this is all like fake compassion there is no actual compassion right it is practical to be a manager is it practical to be a manager with compassion in today's day and time yes of course it is now i'm going to show you some examples okay we're almost at the end guys okay just be just hold on do you know this mr dhavan do you know the example of mr dhavan who was the boss of apj abdul kalam in 1975 do you know the story anybody who knows the story of this his boss and uh, abdul kalam many times spoke about his boss mr dhavan yeah uh, i know it the story Uh, it was like uh, the first time when this operation was failed the credit uh, uh, was taken by uh, dr abdul kalam is this that story you are telling no no no, no. you told exactly opposite you, told, you i i know you know the story but you told it opposite see what happened is abdul kalam was one of the scientist in that program who was part of making that huge missile you know new satellite and everything and when it failed when it failed Uh, and the big press conference came everybody were asking why it failed immediately mr dhavan told his entire team you stand back i will go and i'll talk so he came in front of the press and he took complete responsibility for the failure of the mission he took the responsibility saying i am i'm sorry i messed it up whereas he he is not the one actually apj abdul kalam was the drive behind that but he did not allow apj abdul kalam to come forward instead he took the blame and the next time when it was a success and it there were a big celebration happening and abdul kalam told mr dhawan come on please come you know the, and he said no you all go and speak to the press you all go you and your team go speak to the press and apj abdul kalam quoted if you read his if you hear his speeches many times he quoted his boss for what kind of a compassionate person he was manager or a leader doesn't want to take the credit to himself he always wants to give it to his team that is one of the greatest acts of mr dhawan the, the, the incident can be spoken for hours many many principles that you can learn out of it now this person we all know him 
Mahatma Gandhi. He was a successful lawyer. He could have earned money and lots of money. He could have set up a big industry like another Tata's and Birla's in those days. But what did he do? He came out looking at the way people are being treated by the British, the way brown skin is being tortured. He comes out and he compassionately started the movement of freedom. Of course, along with him, many, many other leaders, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, you know, Sadar Patel, everybody. But one of his examples, one of Gandhi was one of them. And one of the examples that he said is his compassion was so much in his heart that he left his lawyer profession and literally spent the rest of his life for bringing freedom for this country. And people call him father of the nation, right? How many of you know about this, uh, this person on the top, Gundappa Vishwanath? Actually, not many in the current generation know, but before Gavaskar in our company, in, in, our, in our country, Gundappa Vishwanath is one of the most famous cricket players, right? Now, Gundappa Vishwanath, one of the incidents I'll tell you what happened is they were playing against, uh, against British, uh, against England, and uh, there was this one batsman on the, Brit on, the, on the English team side. If you make him out, if you make him out, there is a very good chance that you're going to win the match. A very good chance. And getting him out is very difficult. And it so happened that when you know, the bowling was happening, Indians were doing the bowling side and that person came to bat and he got out. You know, he, you know, he moved the bat, a little nick and the keeper or somebody caught the ball and said they appealed for a catch and the empire gave him out and the person was walking. But Gundapa Vishwanath saw that the person was walking was not happy. Of course, he will never be happy, but his body language was very annoying. So then he went and asked him, what happened? And, and that person told, I did not nick. I've not done it. I know that I've not done it. It's a, it's a wrong decision from the empire side. Gundapa Vishwanath went to the empires and he told, bring back that person on the field as a captain of the opposite side. I'm telling you, I take back my appeal and I request you to take back your decision. Bring back that player on the ground because he is not out. I believe him. I believe him. He's not out. We should give him another chance. And the empires did that. And the person came back to the field. That batsman, the very difficult batsman who will never get out and very dangerous batsman from the British side. How many of you know whether we won the match or lost the match? What do you think? What do you think would have happened? Lost the match or won the match? We might have we lost, lost the match. We lost the match. We lost the match. But Gundapa Vishwanath won the spirit of the game. In the interview, when he was asked, if you would have let that person go, you would have won that match. He told, this is the answer. It's not always about winning and losing. It's a game anyone can win or lose. It's about the contribution and respect to the spirit of the game that matters. Right? So he won the hearts of people and the hearts of opposition forever. And the spirit of the game was saved because it was not about winning. It was about doing the right thing. And there are so many great leaders like this Piramal Industries owner or, you know, this Alfred Ford, son of, you know, grandson of Henry Ford, Rishiket Mafatlal. These people, they are doing some projects you and me wouldn't know. You and me wouldn't know. And there are many leaders like them. They don't do it. They don't come on the uh, papers and say, I've done charity of 50,000 crores. They don't say that. But they are doing what they are doing in the background. And after they leave, you know, when they leave, like this person, Alfred you know, Ford, grandson of Henry Ford, how many of you know that is constructing a huge planetarium called TOVP, Vedic Planetarium in West Bengal? How many of you know that Ford is involved in making this uh, temple? Nobody knows. It is the biggest dome on the planet. Go to Globe and see, go to your YouTube and say TOVP, Temple of Vedic Planetarium. You'll be shocked that such a big project is happening and the person never comes in national news. He never comes and says, I am doing this. There's so many corporate people who come and tell so many things for what they do. These people never do that. You know, they, they have done so many big projects. You know, you should know the, how to be such. In Bhagavad Gita, there is shloka. Yad yad acharati sesa tatta tevatro jana sayat pranamam kurte lokasta danvartate. It says how a leader should be. And, and basically the meaning is very simple. Whatever action a great man performs, common people follow. 
whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. So whatever standards this Dhav, Mr. Dhawan, Gundapa Vishwanath, Mahatma Gandhi, and so many other leaders are setting are the great standards which the remaining world will follow. Right? These are the great stories. So, so checkpoints for managers, right? So uh, where do you think you fall in the whole process? Where do you think you fall? W one minute, guys. You know, this person is still near my door. I'm sorry about this. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So, guys, in a company, you should know where you fit. Now, this is the last slide. Okay. Please hold on there. So, level of cooperation is one concern for people. Is your company more concerned about people or your concern more com concerned about results? Right. There are different management styles in this. One can be more accommodative when he's more concerned for people. And one can be more competitive when he's less concerned for people and more concerned about the company's objectives. One can compromise on both sitting in between or one can avoid either, neither people concern nor company concern, right? Or one can be in the collaboration mode. Collaboration is the best mode that we as managers should get into, right? When I send you the recording, you can read about each one of these models. But here is where we want to be. You want to be a great collaborator in your project, whether you're a project manager or a vice president or a director of the company, doesn't matter how collaborated you are with the company and the people, right? So duties in, 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 in Vedic monarch, meaning a king, he would have several duties, right? What are the duties? Toshana, Prinama, Upalalana, and Anushasana. These are the four duties. Simple. Toshana means a king would make sure there is sufficient food and shelter for the citizens. A king would make sure prinama, meaning distribution of enough gifts to satisfy them. Upalalana, meaning calling, meeting, and speaking sweet, thoughtful words to satisfy the people, including them in discussions. And Anushasana, giving instructions on how to become God-conscious and good citizens. Right? This is what a Vedic monarch used to do. If you go back and read the Vedas, this is what a king would do. Toshana, prinama, upalalana, anushasana. Right? You also as a manager can do all these things. And all these things happen not in a corporation, but in a community where this collaboration happens. The, collab the collaboration happens when you do these four things. This You all have to do Toshana, Prinama, Upalalana, Anushasana. When you do these four things, you can be a great collaborator in the company where you'll also see the results and the people who work with you will also be happy. Right? Corporation just evokes, evokes images of authority, bureaucracy, competition, everything. But community brings out the feeling of responsibility, commitment, and teamwork, right? So we want to form a community in our workplace, community, where you, are, you care for each other at the same time you achieve the results. Did you all understand this slide? And where, you know, what you should become eventually? Yeah? Yes, Lakshman. Okay, so I'm just ending up here. So concluding reminders for the managers, guys, very simple. Three pillars. Can anybody tell what are those three pillars we discussed today for any manager or a successful knowledge leader? Conviction, compassion. Knowledge, conviction, compassion. compassion. Get, get full knowledge, develop compassion from that knowledge by implementing the knowledge and with a spirit of compassion, implement it to workplace, right? Three empowering foundations for a successful manager. Arts, you know, all skills, talents, medals, managers are useless without having these three things. How many agree with that? Or at least you understood that. If you don't have those three things, even if you are a project manager institute certified or a gold medalist from IAMs or engineering of management, doesn't matter. You need to have these three, these three things. Knowledge, conviction, and compassion. Right? Then only... Uh, you will have, you'll become a proper leader. Compassion is infectious. Basis of services to employees and customers should be compassion, right? And I'm going to end with this, something that, you know, uh, something that our leaders and uh, Swati on the call can read. 
Swati, you're there? Yes, sir, I'm there. So, Piramal Industries. Yeah, can you read this uh, article to, published in 2016 by Piramal Industries in a very renowned magazine? You can read this paragraph. All skills, talents, and medals of managers are useless without imbibing knowledge, conviction, and compassion. No, 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 not that, not that. Sorry, this article here on the right side. Humility will decide your uh, next increment. I'm unable to view, Lakshman. I think I have a network issue. The last I can see the update is this. Oh, wait a second. Are you able to see? Anybody yes. else is able, able to see? Anybody else is able to see? Uh, it is there, but the word, but these letters are very small. Okay, let me read it for you. Yes. Humility will decide your next increment. This is this is written uh, and this is implemented in a big multinational. You know, 1.3 billion Piramal Group has implemented. That next increment will be given to people who will develop humility in the company. Humility as a trait. So why am I showing this? Is that uh, my dear friends? Gone are the days when you will be just measured for your skills. You will be measured for your knowledge, conviction, and compassion. And one of the traits of compassion is humility. How respectfully you treat others on the floor, right? How See, it doesn't mean that you don't shout at uh, people when there is a need. For, for getting things done, you have to raise your voice sometimes. But you respect them for what they do. Whatever they do, you should respect them. And, and culture of respect is very, very important on the floor. right? And as managers, you'll succeed and grow only when you have these traits. Otherwise, you know, you will remain as another employer through promotions. You'll reach someplace, but you'll not be happy. You'll not be happy what you're performing. You'll not be happy for what you have. Even if you get 1 lakh salary a month or you get 10 lakh salary a month, you'll not be happy. Unless you develop this knowledge, conviction, and compassion, at your workplace and you enjoy your work. Okay, so I'll stop it here. Any any questions, reflections? Did you all understand what we discussed today? It was a little deep concept. Deep concept. Okay. Okay. So how many of you uh, are able to connect with what uh, Lakshman has discussed in this webinar, in this session today? So informative so Swati. Okay, so, so have you tried to connect those? See, uh, yeah. few of our uh, managers and few of us are going to be managers in future, but you have manager about uh, about you, so you might be connecting with the way uh, they are actually nurturing you or behaving you, uh, behaving with you or taking care of you, right? Yes. So how how many of you felt that uh, connect when we were talking about knowledge, uh, compassion, and all? Yes, Pati, uh, this is my A few things, uh, you know, when uh, Lakshman was speaking, you know, a few things we, uh, you know, it comes in front of our eyes, few things we connect, uh, you know, we connect, uh, we get connected. And few things which we get confused, okay, we'll look, look over it again, like uh, what went wrong and uh, what we are supposed to do in, the, in those uh, situations and all. And few things have to be learned. So, I have to be practiced, not learned, sorry. Um, so these are the things I mean, uh, in the session, this is, uh, this is my uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Rakesh. And as I said, you know, this is a little deep, you know, little uh, advanced topic for beginners. I'm sure freshers would not have understood that much, but they would have gained something out of it. You know, it's actually a session for senior managers, you know, in, the, in any company and, and leaders in any company that they have to develop the qualities of knowledge, conviction and compassion and then drive their work with humility. Then they can achieve unexpected, unimaginable goals, right? Results rather. So I thank you for your time and attention. I know this was a, this was a little uh, topic that may not be that easy to understand, but hear it once again, when you have time, I'm sure there will be some takeaways, some things that you can implement and develop that conviction, right? So thank you very much. Thank you, Lakshman, for the wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.